If there are any questions or comments, inshallah, we can take them. Even when they tell the truth, even when they happen to be truthful. Now, what does this mean? That that would that sounds like a contradictory statement. Mm -hmm. Now, the the Ahlul Bayt salam, what they're trying to convey is that and there's a difference of opinion some some scholars say that the positioning of the stars does have an effect on the psyche of the human being but it doesn't necessarily give you accurate information of future events you know sometimes people they want to look at the positions of the constellations to receive information about the occurrence of future events. Ahlul Bayt say they are liars because they don't have that knowledge. Meaning it's all based on probability and randomness. So even if they happen to get it right, it's not because they actually have a legitimate science. It just means that they happen to be right. Not because they actually have knowledge. It's just you know, when, when you're always predicting the future, you know, that's why fortune tellers, you know, they make their statements so general and they say so much. And then when finally they get something right, they say, see, I told you, it's because of the positioning of the stars. That's why Ahlul Bayt, they say, The astrologists, they're liars, even if they happen to be truthful. That's random. It's not because they actually have understood the nature of that uh, of that science. So if we assume that it is an actual science, they don't have that knowledge. Only awliyaullah have this knowledge. And if there's no such thing, then again, it's just, it's, it's a guessing game. It's pure conjecture. So when it says in the, talks about the stars falling, um, could that also be a reference to the stars collapsing on themselves when they die, or is that going to be different? Now, if you look at what the ulama of tafsir have said, some of some of them have said that this could be one of the, you know, indicators of the the coming of the day of judgment. Because if you look at the Quran, there are verses where Allah speaks about these cataclysmic changes that will happen the collapse of the universe as we know it which signals the end of this temporal world and the beginning of the hereafter and the day of judgment however if you look at the the flow of the verses if you look at the context of the verses the the siyaq it seems that the qasam the oath is related to what comes after because after Allah swears by the the stars setting there's a conversation about the Quran now it could be that Allah is issuing a warning that the day of judgment is coming one of the signs of the day of judgment is the the collapse of the cosmos the falling of the stars and therefore, those who rejected the Qur'an and the Prophet, they have to, you know, prepare for a severe punishment. That could be. That is, that is plausible. But, you know, I, I, I favor the, the interpretation that scholars have given that it's, uh, it's a symbolic reference to the, uh, to the Qur'an. Because the conversation that follows this qasam revolves around uh, the Quran. But again, you know, these uh, interpretations are not mutually exclusive. So it's not that one is right and everything else is wrong. Because the Quran has layers, has many different layers of meaning. So Allah can be conveying multiple meanings and ideas in the same eye and the same phrase. Thank you. Sheikh, does this ayah, uh, when Najmi, the hawa, by the star when it goes down, 
uh, does it has any significance to do with the marriage of Imam Ali al-Islam with the star came down to his house and the star descended? This is it does not uh, relate to that. No, I I haven't seen. I honestly have not seen any hadith uh, where that is. Uh, are you talking about the Radu Shams where the the sun was returned? No, no, no. I'm talking about the star coming down. Uh, you know, as an indication, um, the star coming down to the house of Imam Ali as salam and yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's been selected as a yeah. spouse, as a kufr for Fatima salam alayhi alayha. We have a hadith, for example, in Tafsir al-Burhan by Al-Allam al-Bahrani, which is a tafsir by a very prominent Shia scholar, where he he doesn't, he doesn't give his tafsir. He collects the ahadith of the Ahlul Bayt. Some of them are credible. Some of them are reliable. Some of them have weak chains. But the hadith, what you mentioned is actually a hadith where there was a star, and I would have to look at the Senate. I don't know about the authenticity, but this hadith does exist where this was one of the signs that Amir al-Mu'mineen is and has been selected as the Khalifa and the wasi of the Prophet, that the star, that this nur descended into the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, and that was a, uh, a miracle and an indication that he will be the one who carries the torch after the death of the Holy Prophet. So there is a hadith to that, uh, to that effect. Okay. Sheikh, uh, does this uh, mean? Does this also relate to, you know, when um, they had, um, um, you know, differences when uh, the ayah was revealed to the messenger of Islam that all the doors of the other Sahaba should be closed uh, to the masjid except uh, uh, the door of Imam Ali al -Salam. and then they were all very upset about the whole uh, this and then they tried to you know, defy and argue with the Prophet. And then, um, I think it's in one of the hadiths, now I don't remember very well, that the Prophet says that, yes, uh, we'll wait for the decision of Allah. And then the star descends uh, on the house of Imam Ali al -Salam, and then, uh, you know, the door of the house of Imam Ali al -Salam was open to the Masjid al Nabawi. Yes. In fact, this hadith, you know, when you read it, you would think that this is something that probably only the Shias report in their books. But what you mentioned, and if, you know, because of the time limit, I wasn't able to share all of these uh, these ahadith. Otherwise, you know, it's going to take a very long time to finish Surat al Najm. Yes. But what you mentioned is actually, uh, you know, the uh, it's mentioned in the hadith literature. And also, uh, there are some Sunni scholars that have mentioned that this was a way of Allah honoring Amir al muminin where no one was, all the other doors yeah. were commanded to be shut because, you know, people, they're in a state of janab and you can't be in the mosque of the Prophet or any mosque when you're in a state of janab. But the house of Ali and Fatima is permitted to remain open because they are the epitome of both physical and spiritual purity. And the descending of the star in their home again was uh, was an indication and a way of of highlighting their unique status among all the other companions I sense of it. this is also mentioned in the heart. did you know you said this was a Meccan surah and the incident she mentioned that's sort of the, the, from the Medina now there there's a difference between sababun nuzul and ta'wil so an ayah of the Qur'an could be revealed in Mecca, but there could be something that happens and the Prophet or the Ahlul Bayt, they refer to this ayah as one of the manifestations of that ayah. I'll give you an example. Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was the uncle of the Prophet. Abu Lahab rejected the message of the Prophet. Allah reveals Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabin Watab, condemning him. 
almost prophesizing that he will never believe. When did we fully understand Surah Lahab? When it was revealed or when he died? When he died, meaning it was revealed at a specific time, but when did we understand this? The, the, when did this really, this prophecy become fulfilled? When he died, because he died on Kufu. Because if he were to believe, he would have nullified the surah, the message of the surah. So Surah Lahab is an example where a surah is revealed, but the prophecy of that surah is delayed for a later time. So this could be an example of that. Mm -hmm.